since Saturday morning. We've had KPRC2 storm teams coverage tracking barrel. I'm like all tongue tied. I got you, girl. Like, Keep going. Have we been working for since yeah. Sunday? Yeah, that's you're, what you're was. doing great. So as the storm made its way through the Texas coast, we had people along the coast reporting from what the conditions were like down there. Yeah, so you just talked to Owen. Owen was up on the east end of the island. West end of the island, as you continue to go down, we had Robert Arnold was in Lake Jackson. We had Mario Diaz. We had Bill Spencer. And then, of course, down in Matagorda, we had our own Gage Goulding as well. So here's the thing. Barrel had just passed, now tropical depression, but it made landfall early yesterday morning, about 4 o'clock or so, right near Matagorda. And that is where our man Gage Goulding was and photojournalist Oscar Chavez experienced a storm through all of its stages. You have to take a look. So we are out. Um, this is the Colorado River here behind me. Uh, storm surge not necessarily a huge factor right now. As you take a look uh, right on the other side of this bench here, you can kind of see. So it's 77 degrees right now with 31.3 miles per hour uh, winds coming through here. And I will admit, this is more of a calm band that has been coming through here. The last time we talked, winds here were around uh, 36 miles per hour. And the latest update, uh, photojournalist Oscar Chavez, can you zoom in on that? I got 41.3 gusts here. This is the really, the big damaging factor is storm surge. And I want to, you know, we're, we're looking at this throughout the day here. The storm surge has not even risen up to this point, and, and we were talking about this mainly uh, partly because of the fact that we could see the, the worst of the storm surge coming at low tide, and wow, that is quite the gust of wind there that is coming through. Um, I'm not trying to be dramatic, just want to make sure I don't fall over. I'd love to get a reading on that. Let me go ahead, if you guys are even able to hear me, let's get a reading on this. So these are gusts coming in around, oh man, I can't even look, 35, wow, that's a heavy band there. Yeah, so 38, 39, so those are 40 mile an hour winds, and you look at that, we're supposed to be seeing uh, upwards of 75 miles an hour, maybe even stronger as the National Hurricane Center said that we should be seeing a strengthening uh, storm. So I gotta toss it back to you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dry off here a little bit, but obviously a strengthening barrel is what we're dealing with right now. Um, I'm gonna stick my hand out here. This is, you can see it. I mean, you can see the wind coming by. Ready, here we go. Get, Oscar, get in on this, because you can hear it. That's catching, remember, it's only gonna hold the max sustained gust. Wow, 59.7 miles per hour. The last time we talked to you, we were at uh, about 40 miles per hour. So the significant change just in this so far, oh, there goes the power once again, and it's out this time. Look, oh, it's back. Wow, so this is an on and off, hot and cold relationship out here almost. But it, right now, it is gusting outside. There's another good example over here. Uh, this is uh, just a, a light that we're using. You can just see it shaking back and forth as the entire house shakes here. But I do believe that we are in the eye wall because the house is not shaking. Uh, the noise that you hear, there is a little bit of wind, but it's the water still rushing. Come over here, take a look at this. This is water rushing from the bay into the Colorado River, from the Gulf of Mexico into the Colorado River. You can kind of see it flowing out and away from us underneath the house. Um, that was the dock that we were standing on earlier today, but, and then you come to this where it's calm. And, I mean, and you could, you could quite literally paint a picture out here if you wanted to. You could set up an easel and paint a picture because that's how gentle and calm these conditions are. We are outside. As soon as we open this here, I mean, I have to lean into it. I mean, it's just the wow. gusts of wind that will come and open it. I, yeah. I'm leaning into it. Is that Look the worst me. you've seen I'm, it? I'm, I'm, uh, on this end, yeah, for sure. On this end, absolutely. Yeah, so that was Gage Golding reporting from Matagorda yesterday, and Gage is joining us live now. Gage, I would say that probably you endured about 12 hours of this storm down in Matagorda, and it was just like a roller coaster of weather where it would be bad, and then you hit the eye of the storm, and then it was bad again, right? Yeah, it was... Uh 
It was a long time. I don't really even know how long it was, to be honest with you, but it was a while. And yeah, it, it you know, we made the kind of a last minute decision to come here to Matagorda um, and find a place and then we knew whenever we were coming that it was going to be a last minute decision. And by the time we got here, things were already starting to, you know, get gusty. And by the time we really got set up, we were like, okay, this is, yeah, this is it. But I want to say, you know, hats off. You don't see it. You, you always see the reporter out in the field getting beat up and whatnot but what you don't see is behind the scenes and it's you know every tv station every media outlet but i really got to say oscar chavez behind the lens uh working out here in the toughest the worst of conditions um dealing with really really expensive equipment trying to keep it dry you know they don't care about me let me get wet and soak it that's fine whatever but like keeping the camera up and running and power management and making sure we have batteries i mean this is a science and he has it down to a t and i just you know you see me but you don't see the men and women behind the camera that that bring you those live images and I just hats off they do all the hard work I just go out and get rained on and, and blown over but seriously I, the the guys and the girls that do this is it's just incredible yeah Gage uh, I mean Oscar is definitely a stellar uh, photographer that we have here uh, tell us more about y'all's experience down there we're looking at the storm tracker right now and I, I guess I heard rumors around the newsroom that you guys got flooded out, but 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 is that is there any truth to that? Like, did there did water ever come into the vehicle? You know, I, I, Oscar, can we swing the camera around? I'm going to put you to work one more time, man. Um, this is our. I don't even want to know the price tag on this thing. It's it's still working. <laughs> our workhorse over here. Um, you might be in trouble. It's, I was uh, so scared. It's, I was going to say it's looking a little uh, dirty on the front side there too. There, Red Gage. Yeah, we might have to hit the. Bu something um yeah that that thing is a workhorse uh but it's made to be out here you know these vehicles are designed to be out here in this weather um not designed to go under water and storm surge so yeah whenever the lights went out we were constantly checking on it but whenever the power went out um and we couldn't really see that's kind of when we kind of you know worried a little bit and storm surge comes up quick so whenever we walked yeah. outside and you know it was flashing the hitting the little button to see the the flashing of the light and we saw the water rising it got over the bumper of and it's a jacked up lifted up you know pickup truck it got right. over the bumper and that's whenever i was like we might have to call some help to get us <laughs> back to houston at some point yeah that's but it's definitely. good it drives we i know that's what yesterday. we saw later but yesterday that's the worst of it. yeah when you guys were out driving for sure all right so i want to ask you a question here as well and and when you were when we saw you earlier in that evening and you were you were getting the, at least the beginning parts of the eye wall um that was really roaring at that point and then you were in the eye and i knew because there were other storm chasers that were out there in matagorda too and they were all starting to post and i kept telling the booth i said go to, you know, and I know you guys were, were power saving and, and whatnot, but um, I was so excited when we got you during the eye because I don't think people get an opportunity to really understand what that's like. You know what I mean? Because we saw, and I wanted to show yeah. people that because they saw you literally holding yourself to try to brace against the wind. And then when we saw you in the calm of the eye, as you were talking, and, and Owen and I were laughing all, all yesterday and this morning too, and we're like, get that man a barbecue. He was ready to rock and roll there in the eye because it was perfect. And then once I saw the back half of that eye wall coming at you again, I said, hey, go back to Gage because I want to show people you saw what he was doing an hour ago. Now let's check in with him now. And it was just, you know, hell on wheels part two. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is, you know, it's such a, I have a huge appreciation for Mother Nature, which is why we're, we're here along the beach now is because it's such a beautiful place and how one day it can be so mean and angry and the next day it can just be so peaceful and serene and a happy place. And the beach right. has always been a happy place for myself. Sure. But yeah, being in the eye wall, people don't really appreciate just how incredible it is until you experience it. I don't wish that upon anybody because usually you have to go through hell to get to the eye wall and then right. you have to go through hell again to get out of it. So, you know, but yeah, being there in the middle of that, and I, I think Houston itself kind of had a very interesting experience too because there was a lot of that and then the, I believe came over, I think it came right over to KPRC Studios, correct me yep, if I'm wrong. It did. I mean, that, that's, to be able to experience that, especially in such a large metro in some fashion right. as the storm breaks up, that's incredible. And to to be as it's making landfall as its strongest, you know, here in the United States, um, it's an incredible experience because the house is shaking and the windows are, you know, dang near giving out. And then it's like, I could go for a run and be fine. No rain, <laughs> right. no Crazy. wind, nothing. Right. And then it, yeah, and like literally an hour and a half later, and then it, it came from back. the other end of the house, yep. just blowing it. And it, it's, it was almost just as strong. And it's just, it's, in, it's so incredible how there's that little bit of time where, yep. 
You can do whatever you want. Have a little birthday party. All right, Gage. Well, we are running out of time, and I know you probably should be anxious to get back home after all of this. So we do hope that uh, the, the damage is cleared enough for you to make it through the streets and back home. As we mentioned, Gage has been reporting on this since Sunday. Yeah. All right, thanks, Yeah, we Gage. should be good. A damage, it's slowly getting better, so we should be able to make it out of here. The big thing is just trying to find gas. I'm sure y'all deal with it in Houston. It's, yeah. There's no power, yep. so it, it's a tough part. But we'll get there. All right. Well, hey, you and Oscar did great work out there, Gage. Proud of you guys.